Hi friends, I'm Miss Lauren. Hi, I'm Nathan. Today we're going to be reading The Berenstain Bears Easter Sunday by Mike Berenstain. We love the Berenstain Bears and we're so excited to join you this afternoon. You ready, Nathan? Yeah. All right, here we go. It was a beautiful spring morning in bear country. The rising sun spread its golden light over the land. Robins were chirping in the trees. Bright spring flowers were in bloom. New green leaves were all abud, but it wasn't just any beautiful spring morning. It was Easter Sunday. Things were bustling in the bear family's tree house as they got ready for church. Everyone, Mama and Papa, and all the way to Brother, Sister, and Honey were dressed in their Easter best, bright colors instead of their everyday clothes. Why do we put on special clothes for Easter, Mama? asked Sister as they admired themselves in the mirror. Bright colors are for happy, joyous occasions, Mama explained. And Easter Sunday is the most joyous occasion of all, Papa added. The bears joined a parade of other brightly dressed families on their way to chapel in the woods. They greeted friends as they filled in and found their places. Their neighbor, Ms. McGriz, played the organ. Rich, deep tones filled the church. The cubs could feel those low, rumbling notes right down in their tummies. Then Preacher Brown spoke. I bid you all welcome on this joyous Easter morning. Let us celebrate the most wonderful day God has made, the day when Jesus rose. Ms. McGriz brought her hand down on the keyboard and the organ boomed to life. Everyone stood to sing an Easter hymn. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Voices joined with the roar of the organ and rose to heaven in a great joyous noise. The cubs could feel it right down in their bones. At the hymn's close, Preacher Brown stood at the pulpit. Easter is indeed a joyous occasion, he began. Let us remember the glorious story of Easter, a story of new life for the whole world. He told them of Easter, how Jesus came to the city of Jerusalem and was greeted with joy, how he ate the Last Supper with those who loved him, but one turned against him, how he was taken prisoner and put to death, and how he rose from the dead. The cubs knew the story, but hearing it in church on Easter morning made it seem deeper and closer. It stayed with them for the rest of the service, and surely it would for the rest of the day. After church, there was an Easter treasure hunt for the cubs. Ms. McGriz hid light, brightly colored gift boxes all around the churchyard. Inside each was a figure from the story of Noah's Ark. A little Noah, a Mrs. Noah, their sons and wives, and dozens of animals. The cubs had fun finding them all and putting them together in a big Noah's Ark scene. This is even more fun than an Easter egg hunt, said Sister. Yes, said Miss McGriz. We thought using a Bible story would be more fitting here at church. That made Brother wonder, is there anything in the Bible about Easter eggs and the Easter bunny, he asked. Preacher Brown answered, no, Brother, not a thing. Then where did the idea of Easter eggs and the Easter bunny come from, asked Sister. For those who lived long ago, explained the preacher, before Jesus came into the world, Spring was a very special time of year. It was a time when new life started in the earth. Everyone noticed that birds laid their eggs in spring and baby birds hatched out. Bunnies had their babies. Lots and lots of babies in springtime too. That's a lot of bunnies. Yeah. 
so, said the preacher, since Easter comes in the spring and many animal babies are born in the spring. Oh, I see, said brother. They just sort of got mixed up together. Is that right? Yes, said Preacher Brown. They don't really have anything to do with each other. They just happen to come at the same time of year and both have to do with new life. But Sister was worried. Does that mean we shouldn't have Easter eggs, chocolate bunnies, and candy on Easter, she asked. Well, said the preacher, some good people do believe that, but others think that as long as you remember that Easter eggs and bunnies and candy don't really have anything to do with Jesus and Easter, it's okay. Good, said Sister. She really liked Easter candy, especially jelly beans. Do you like jelly beans? Yeah. You do? I don't. I like chocolate bunnies. <laughs> the Bear family said goodbye to Preacher Brown, Ms. McGriz, and the rest of their friends at the chapel in the woods and walked home through the beautiful spring countryside. They saw robins nesting in their pretty blue eggs and families of bunnies hopping about with their new babies. Look, said Sister. Those are real live Easter eggs and Easter bunnies. Mama smiled. I think those kind of eggs and bunnies are much more a part of Easter than any painted eggs or chocolate bunnies. They are part of God's creation. Yes, Papa agreed. Just like we are part of God's creation too. Later, the family sat down to a delicious Easter dinner. Lord, prayed Papa as they joined hands. We thank you for our Easter meal and for the greatest love of all that came to us on that first Easter Sunday long ago. Amen. Amen, they all said. And as they ate, the bears gazed out of their treehouse window, enjoying the beautiful spring day that God created in bear country. Thank you for joining us. We had so much fun reading you this story. We love and miss you all. Praying you all stay healthy, safe, and we can't wait to see you back at church. Bye. God bless you. Bye.